Hi, welcome to Mahika Tutorials. I am Mahika Motwani. In previous tutorial, we have seen how we can provide the lifecycle methods for a bean by implementing these two interfaces initializing bean and disposable bean. Initializing bean interface provides a method after property set which is called after the properties have been set that is at the time of initialization of bean and then this disposable bean interface provides a method destroy which is called before the container destroys the bean now here if we have multiple beans then every bean need to implement these interfaces to provide the lifecycle method so to avoid that we can use another approach for providing the lifecycle methods rather than implementing these interfaces and that is what we are going to see in this tutorial we will do, do not implement any interface rather than that we will provide the configuration for our init, init and destroy method in this xml file so let us make the changes first in this beam file so here we need to remove this and we need to remove these definitions as well now we will write our own initialization and destroy method we can give any name to this method which we want to be executed at the time of initialization of bean we are giving init name to this method and here we can give a message init method call similarly we can define a method which should be called at the time of destruction of the bean or at the time when the container destroys the bean so here we will give the name destroy only and then again we can give a message here destroy call okay now let's run our test file and check out whether these lifecycle methods are getting called or not now here you can see that these lifecycle methods are not getting called because we haven't notified the spring about which method is our initialization method and which is the method which should be called at the time of destroying the bean so for that we need to provide that configuration in beans.xml now here along with the id and class attribute for the bean definition we need to give one more attribute init method to specify the name of the method which should be called at the time of initialization of bean and the name of this method is init similarly we can provide configuration for our destroy method so here we will give destroy method and then the name of the method which is destroy okay now let's save our xml file and again run this test.java file now here you can see init method is getting called and destroy method is also getting called so this is how we can provide the lifecycle methods without using the callback interfaces by providing the methods in the bean class and then providing that information in this bean tag now suppose if we have multiple bean definitions in our beans.xml file and for every bean we have the init method with the name init and destroy method with the name destroy then rather than providing these attributes here in bean tag we can provide this information in the beans tag so for that we need to give the attribute default init method and default destroy method okay so it states that for all the beans that will be defined in this xml file there is an initialization method called init and there is a method destroy which should be called at the time of destroying the bean so now let's run our test file again and check whether it is working or not now here again init method is getting called and destroy method is getting called so these are the different approaches which can be used to provide the lifecycle methods now we have seen 
three different ways. The first one was where we can implement the interfaces initializing bean and disposable bean. In that case, we need to override the methods of those interfaces. And the second one is we can define our own method and then we can provide that information in the bean tag. And then the third approach is where we can give it in the bean tag using the default init method and default destroy method. So you can use any of these approach as per your requirement. Now in next tutorial, we will see that we can provide this information regarding the callback methods using annotations as well. So we will see the use of annotations for specifying the initialization and destroy method in next tutorial. Thank you for watching this tutorial.